one question on the sectional anatomy is for sure 100 percent you will get one question either on the sagittal or on the transverse or on the coronal or maybe multiple question the recently conducted exam they asked two questions on the same section only they asked about the mammillary body which part of thalamus it is connected to and they also put an arrow behind the brain stem and asked that which cranial nerve or which nerve is to be expected to seen from this dorsal aspect so identifying and understanding the sections is very important it's not about the question it's about the identifying the structures in that section and by doing so we'll also cover up the the uh, the white matter of the brain here and we also cover up the three sections and the ventricles also so starting with this section guys this section here is the sagittal section this is the sagittal section in the sagittal section obviously the section will go through corpus callosum so this whole thing is a corpus callosum there there is corpus callosum now there are different parts of corpus callosum like this that, that's a posterior part of corpus callosum and you can see it is very close to cerebellum here that's the thickest part of corpus callosum is called as a splenium here that's a splenium of corpus callosum i don't have to mark that because we just have to mark the boundaries of the ventricle i'm just telling you that the posterior part of the corpus callosum that is splenium anterior part will be genu and below we'll have a rostrum here this band is fornix this band is fornix guys that's a, that's a white matter bundle running forward like this it is called as a fornix you can see the fornix bundle below the corpus callosum and you can see a septum which is stretching between the corpus callosum and the fornix and this is called as a septum pellucidum pellucidum it's a pellucid it's a translucent septum here this is called as a septum pellucidum this is septum pellucidum pellucid means translucent because this septum pellucidum is separating the two lateral ventricle we'll see in the next section guys it is separating the two lateral ventricles so that is called a septum pellucidum now where is third ventricle guys the third ventricle is the one which i'm highlighting for you whatever i'm highlighting here is basically the ventricle present between the thalamus and hypothalamus and that's a third ventricle so highlighted part here let me just in fact write it here guys this highlighted part is basically what ventricle the third ventricle let's understand the boundaries of third ventricle see what you can there are there, there are some hints that we'll take from the previous discussion and a few new things will be added to it here you can see the fornix and below the fornix you can see a choroid plexus also guys so i can say that the roof roof of the third ventricle is by these two structures this one and this one so fornix fornix and choroid plexus the fornix and the choroid plexus are present in the roof of the third ventricle if this whole thing third ventricle the roof is by the two structure that is fornix and just below the fornix there is a choroid plexus there if i look at the anterior aspect below the rostrum of corpus callosum that's a rostrum of corpus callosum you can see rostrum of corpus callosum is not in the third ventricle but what is there just below the rostrum of corpus callosum there is another commissural fiber and this commissure is called as anterior commissure that's an anterior commissure guys anterior commissure is there in the anterior wall that's an anterior commissure that is in the anterior wall and just below the anterior commissure we have this thin septum which is called as the lamina terminalis this is the lamina terminalis lamina terminalis so guys anterior commissure and lamina terminalis both of them are forming what wall the anterior wall of the third ventricle they're forming the anterior wall of third ventricle so roof is by fornix and choroid plexus anterior wall is by the anterior commissure and this lamina terminalis okay let's go to the posterior side now on the posterior side this gland here guys if you remember this gland here is a pineal gland that is the sagittal section view of the pineal gland now what do you see above the pineal gland and below the pineal gland we have some commissural fibers we have a commissural fiber present in the upper lamina of the pineal gland and we have commissural fiber present in the lower lamina of the pineal gland in the upper lamina in the superior lamina of the pineal gland the commissural fiber is called as the habinular commissure habinular that's a habinular commissure below the 
pineal gland just below the pineal gland this commissure here is called as a posterior commissure corpus callosum is the main commissural fiber but you know corpus callosum is not able to connect everything in the two cerebrum so we need some extra or additional commissural fibers here we have habenular commissure then we have pineal gland then we have posterior commissure and after that i'm i'm pretty sure you all know that what is that guys that's a aqueduct of sylvius look at that aqueduct here even the aqueduct of sylvius is located in the posterior side that is the aqueduct the the sylvian duct aqueduct of sylvius so i can say in that sequence the sequence is also important habenular commissure pineal gland posterior commissure and aqueduct they are all forming the posterior wall of the third ventricle they are all forming the posterior wall so till now in this section i can see the roof i can see anterior wall i can see the posterior wall what about the floor here what about the floor of the third ventricle and see this is very very interesting if i just i want all of you to pay attention here guys just look at this section let me just take you back to this ventral aspect of the brain stem there we go that's a ventral aspect of brain stem if i if i just request you to just focus on the midline structures here look at the midline structure here is what optic chiasma just look at the interpeduncular fossa guys optic chiasma just behind optic chiasma is infundibulum just behind infundibulum are what mammillary bodies and behind mammillary bodies is what it's a posterior perforating substance ignore the third nerve third nerve is slightly outside i'm just looking at the midline structures close to midline optic chiasma infundibulum mammillary body posterior perforating substance they are all in the midline when you see the brain stem from this aspect this is interpeduncular fossa if i see the same thing from the inside from the other other side here that's a floor of third ventricle only the th floor of third ventricle that we are discussing is the same thing if you look at this picture here look here guys the first thing optic chiasma that's optic chiasma second thing infundibulum you can see it's a stock of pituitary gland only look at that that's what mammillary body can you see the perforation what perforation posterior perforating substance so when you saw it from this side it was interpeduncular fossa now you seeing it from this side it is the floor of what ventricle the third ventricle so if you know interpeduncular fossa you know the third ventricle also so there we go this is the optic chiasma the section from the optic chiasma then infundibulum then we have mammillary bodies i'm just writing mb for mammillary body this is posterior perforating substance that's a posterior perforating substance and if i go, go a little behind this this is a part of midbrain only right that's a midbrain we have pons here now this part of the midbrain is called as a tegmentum of the midbrain tectum is behind this is a tectum part where we have colliculus and everything this is a tegmentum part guys so this portion of the midbrain is also forming the floor and we call it the tegmentum that's a tegmentum part of the midbrain that's a midbrain only it's a tegmentum part of the midbrain and all this is present in the floor all this is present in the floor guys this is all in the floor here so these are the boundaries of the third ventricle in front of you roof may we can see the fornix and choroid plexus anterior wall may i can see anterior commissure and lamina terminalis posterior wall may just have to think about the pineal gland above and below then in the superior lamina of the pineal gland is habenular commissure in the inferior lamina is a posterior commissure aqueduct of sylvius is also there and floor when you think of the floor think of interpeduncular fossa leaving third nerve just don't think about third nerve rest everything else like optic chiasma infundibulum mammillary body posterior perforating substance everything is lined in the floor of the third ventricle what about lateral wall this section is sagittal section i can see roof floor anterior wall posterior wall what about the lateral wall guys lateral wall look at this elevation here is a thalamus this whole thing and this is hypothalamus so guys this is thalamus here and this is hypothalamus so i can say that lateral wall is by thalamus and hypothalamus thalamus above hypothalamus below and they're forming the lateral wall of third ventricle so that's the first section guys sagittal section in which we understood the boundaries of third ventricle here that's sagittal section where we understood the boundaries of third ventricle now from this let me take you to the next section the next section is a 
transverse section. Now when you take a transverse section guys, when you take a transverse section, what all to be expected, what different will be seen here and then we will compare it with the third section that is coronal. Here we go. So we do not have to look at the entire cerebral hemisphere for this section. So I have just taken a middle part of the cerebral hemisphere where this in the transverse section what all is to be seen. Look guys, in the transverse section, first of all, this white matter, the one which I am marking at right now, this here is internal capsule. This is internal capsule. Right, it is an internal capsule here. Now internal capsule is surrounded by some important nucleus. On the medial side we have this head of caudate nucleus and thalamus. On the medial side we have this caudate nucleus that is a head of caudate nucleus to be more precise. This is the head of caudate nucleus, head of caudate nucleus and below that that is thalamus. So medial side these two important structures that is caudate nucleus and thalamus whereas just lateral to internal capsule you will find this lentiform nucleus here. This here is a lentiform nucleus. I am putting a differentiating line around it here that is a lentiform nucleus. More lateral to lentiform nucleus, can you see a very thin line over there? It looks like a very, very thin line only. This, this, a very thin line, a piece of grey matter only, this thin line here is called as the claustrum. Claustrum, guys, that is called as a claustrum. And more outside the claustrum, more outside the claustrum, you will see this is a hidden lobe of the cerebrum which is called as insula. This hidden lobe is called as insula. the insular cortex, it is more lateral to the claustrum here. When we talk about the white matter in the cerebrum, see internal capsule is there because it is inside the lentiform nucleus, so we call it internal capsule, that is how it is named. The one which is outside, look at that white matter which is present outside the lentiform nucleus is external capsule and the one which is even outside the claustrum is called as extreme capsule. So this white matter, the one which I am highlighting right now here guys, this here is called as what capsule? That is an external capsule. that is the external capsule and more outside the external capsule there is another thin sheet of or thin layer of white matter which is called as the extreme capsule. You will not be able to differentiate the external capsule and extreme capsule in the radiological images because claustrum is not visible here. You cannot differentiate or appreciate the claustrum in the MRI images and also that is why we generally just say, say internal capsule and external capsule. So external and extreme are also different and we have a claustrum in between and more outside we have this hidden lobe which is called as insula. We call it hidden lobe because you cannot see it from outside. You have to open the lateral sulcus to see inside and that is called as insula or insular cortex. So these are the things that you should be able to identify in the transfer section. I mean this is a must to identify here. But guys we need to talk a little more about this internal capsule. See internal capsule is giving passage to major tracts here. So the four important tracts, the four major tract that one must know going from internal capsule and I am going to go with the, with the same uh, orientation only, I, I do not want to change your orientation here. So if this is the internal capsule that we just saw of the left side, so we have an anterior limb of internal capsule, there is a genu of internal capsule there is a lentiform part, there is a retro lentiform part and there is a sub lentiform part also. The first, if I just, leave, this, this here is the anterior limb. This is called as an anterior limb of internal capsule. This portion is the genu. This portion here is the posterior limb, this is a large posterior limb of internal capsule. 
Then we have a portion of the in internal capsule which is present behind the lentiform nucleus. So we call it retro lentiform part. This portion here is a retro lentiform part. This one. And this one here is a sub lentiform part. Retro lentiform part and sub lentiform part. Actually, it is present below the level of lentiform nucleus. I'm just drawing it in the transfer section. You cannot see it actually. It's it's present below. Niche hoga wo. That is sub lentiform part. The important major tract, guys, to be remembered present here. The genu of the internal capsule is giving passage to the corticonuclear tract. It is giving passage to the corticonuclear tract. Now. What is a corticonuclear tract? That means from the cortex to the cranial nerve nuclei. Corticonuclear tract basically is the upper motor neuron of all cranial nerves. Whatever cranial nerve you think about, their upper motor neuron is present in the genu only. Whether it is third nerve, fourth nerve, sixth nerve, facial nerve, mandibular nerve, upper motor neuron of all these cranial nerves is present in the genu part. If the genu is injured, if there is an injury in the genu of the internal capsule, that means there will be upper motor neuron lesion of all the cranial nerves. Upper motor neuron lesion of all cranial nerves. Posterior limb and that to the anterior, anterior part, anterior two-third. Anterior two-third of the posterior limb is giving passage to the corticospinal tract, that is pyramidal tract. Corticospinal tract is running it is going through the anterior two-third of posterior limb guys it is running in the anterior two-third of posterior limb that's important it's not in the entire posterior limb it's the anterior two-third of posterior limb so this corticospinal tract the pyramidal tract is present in the posterior limb but again the important part is in the anterior two-third of the posterior limb in the anterior two-third of the posterior limb Retro and sub, I mean, there are some tracks going into the anterior limb also, but not important. You just can completely ignore the anterior limb. Retro and sub lentiform part is important. Now, retro means behind, sub means below. Retro is behind, sub is below. What part of the cerebrum is behind? The visual cortex. What part of the cerebrum is below? In the temporal lobe, auditory cortex. So, obviously, retro lentiform part, which is behind, is giving passage to the auditory uh, visual pathway. That means the optic radiations will be going through it. Optic radiation, because they have to go back. And sub lentiform part is present below. So, what radiations are going below? The auditory radiations are passing below. The auditory pathway is present in the sub lentiform part. So, that's another important portion of the internal capsule. That sub lentiform part, the one which is present below, is giving passage to the auditory pathway, auditory radiation. And the most posterior part of internal capsule, that is a retro lentiform part, the posterior part, the retro lentiform part is giving passage to the optic radiation, that is the visual pathway. Just remember these four important tracts from the internal capsule. When you read about the internal capsule, there are so many other tracts which are given over there, but I can tell you that all the questions can be solved from this because directly or indirectly it is about the cranial nerve involvement or the corticospinal tract or the two major pathway, visual and auditory pathway, where they are going from the internal capsule. The two descending tract and the two main ascending tracts from the internal capsule which need to be remembered. Also remember guys that the representation of human body in the internal capsule is like this, like head and neck will be represented. Corticonuclear means cranial nerve, up, upper motor neuron of cranial nerve means head and neck muscle. So, this head and neck representation is here. Then we have upper limb representation, then we have trunk representation and then we have lower limb representation. That just to tell you that that's how the body is represented in the internal capsule. So, if the injury is in the genu part of internal capsule, your head and neck muscle will be involved. If the posterior limb is involved, anterior part of posterior limb, upper limb, posterior part of posterior limb is involved, then it will lead to the posterior limb muscle involvement here. That's how the muscle, the innervation of the muscles are arranged in here. We have head and neck fiber, then we have upper limb, then trunk and then the lower limb fibers. So, this is about the internal capsule, the different 
tracks which are going through internal capsules. So guys, we're done with the two sections here. We're done with the, uh, the, the slidal section, the very, very important slidal section here. And then the transfer section, which is showing you about the internal capsule and its relations here. Now coming to the final section, and that is the coronal section here. Now if you take a coronal section, look at this guys. This is the coronal section here. Now in this coronal section, first let me just tell you the all big things here, and then I'll take this, this part separately here. In this coronal section, first of all, these are the lateral ventricles which I'm marking, right? That's a lateral ventricle and that is a third ventricle there. So this is a third ventricle and these are the two lateral ventricles. The roof of the lateral ventricle is by corpus callosum. So that fiber over there is corpus callosum. And here is internal capsule. Now, I want you to look at this, guys. I'm just going to show it on one side only, guys. This is internal capsule. See, this is the internal capsule you're looking at in the coronal section. Previously, you saw it in the transverse section. It's in the coronal section. The internal capsule fibers are running like this, first as a compact white matter bundle. Okay? That, that This also is internal capsule. That is the internal capsule is running like that. Once this internal capsule, let me write IC, that is internal capsule. Once this internal capsule reaches the level of corpus callosum, there are two different type of fibers. That's a commissural fiber. This is projecting fiber. Internal capsule, once it reaches the level of corpus callosum, then you will see the fibers of internal capsule is radiating everywhere in the cerebral cortex. And that's how we call it the corona radiata. That's corona radiata. Got my point? So till here, it is a compact white matter bundle. But once it reaches the level of the corpus callosum, after that it goes into the different part of the cerebrum. It radiates into the different part of cerebrum and we call it corona radiata. So in a way, corpus callosum is a landmark here. Till the level of corpus callosum, you see internal capsule. And above the level of corpus callosum, you will see the radiations over there. The, the corona radiata will be seen. As I said, I will take this part separately in the next section, in the next image. But see, once again, medial to the internal capsule is a caudate nucleus and thalamus. Just to remind you from the previous section, this is a caudate nucleus. This is thalamus here. I'm going to tell you about this part again. Lateral to the internal capsule, this is lentiform nucleus. Once again, this is a lentiform nucleus. And more lateral to lentiform nucleus, can you see the hidden lobe once again? Because when they ask this question in the AIMS, they ask the insula in this section. In this section, guys. That's the hidden gyrus. And this hidden gyrus is what you call as the insula. Insula or insular cortex. So this is just to show you something outside the internal capsule. The same lentiform nucleus is there and more outside we have an insula to be seen in this section, in this particular section here. We already discussed the third ventricle and its boundary in the sagittal section. This section, I'm using it for the lateral ventricle, guys. So I'm going to take the zoom in part of this part. Let, let, let's just take the zoom in of this section here and understand what are the boundaries of the lateral ventricle. But before I go to that section, understand that lateral ventricle is having a roof. It is having a medial wall, as you can see, medial wall. And rest, everything is the floor only. So there is no lateral wall. In the lateral ventricle, we have a roof, we have medial wall, and we have a floor. Roof, medial wall, and floor is there is no lateral wall. Is there. Everything is considered as a floor only from here till here. Let's take that section. So that's the same, that's the zoom in view of the same so that I can show you the structures clearly there. So guys, this here is a lateral ventricle, right? Now roof of the corp roof of this uh, lateral ventricle is by corpus callosum. That is corpus callosum and that is present in the roof. The corpus callosum which is present in the roof, right? Clearly. Medial wall. I hope you remember when I showed you the sagittal section, guys. There is something which was stretching between the corpus callosum and fornix. No harm in going back. Just look at this one. Look at this septum over there. From the corpus callosum till the fornix. What is that? That is septum pellucidum. And it's the septum pellucidum, this septum here, which separates the two lateral ventricle. So now if I, if I see it from the front, when I see it from the front here, so I can see that from the corpus callosum, a thin septum is going. And just below that septum, I'm expecting to see the fornix. And below that, I'm ex expecting to see the choroid plexus. And below that, I'm expecting to see the ventricle, the third ventricle here. Just remember the sequence here. Septum pellucidum, fornix, choroid plexus, and third ventricle is there. Same thing. Septum pellucidum, fornix, 
Look at this plexus, guys. Choroid plexus and the cavity below you already know is what? Third ventricle. This is third ventricle only. So medial wall. Medial wall is just by this septum called a septum pellucidum. That's it. The medial wall is by the septum pellucidum. This is forming what wall? This is forming the medial wall of the lateral ventricle. So roof is by corpus callosum and medial wall is by septum pellucidum. That's it. Below septum pellucidum, we have fornix, guys. This is fornix and there are actually two fornix there. It looks like one only, but there are two fornix. We have two fornix which are running below the septum pellucidum and then they again separate and go downward to the mammillary body. In the floor, now what's there in the floor? All this is in the floor only, guys. We already know this here. Let me just point it out here. This here is the caudate nucleus. This here is the thalamus, which is forming the lateral wall of third ventricle also. That, that, that whole thing is a thalamus. I will be discussing a few details of thalamus after this. And then in between the thalamus and the caudate nucleus, there is a vein called as thalamostriate vein. There is a vein called as thalamostriate vein. This guys, we already said here is the choroid plexus. That is a choroid plexus which is situated below the fornix. Let me label the fornix here. This is the fornix. So this caudate nucleus, thalamostriate vein, choroid plexus, thalamus and fornix, they are all present in the floor of the lateral ventricle. They are all in the floor of lateral ventricle. No lateral wall here guys. So we have one thing in the roof that is corpus callosum. That is it. One thing in medial wall, septum pellucidum. And right from here till here, everything that you see here is present in the floor here. So for uh, this fornix, choroid plexus, thalamus, caudate nucleus and the vein in between is thalamostriate vein that is also there in the floor. That is also there in the floor. So what I am saying here is you have to have to know about these three sections here. Because as I said, one question on the sectional anatomy, on the neuroanatomy is for sure. Definitely one question will be there here. Definitely. It's just that you have to, uh, the question could be different here. Like fornix, there was a question, there was a section given in the exam in which they gave a coronal section and the arrow was on the fornix here. And the question was that following fiber originates where? Now fornix is a white matter bundle, you saw it is running uh, that way here. The fornix bundle runs like this. If you see the sagittal section. So what it is connecting, something that you note, noted down here, fornix fiber is basically connecting the hippocampus It is connecting the hippocampus to the mammillary body. And the direction is important, guys. This, this is the direction the fornix fibers are running. They are running toward the mammillary body. So if the question says that this fornix, this white matter bundle is fornix here. <clears throat> if the question says fornix fibers originates where? So fornix fibers are originating where? In the hippocampus. They originates in hippocampus and they terminates in mammillary body. So the fornix fiber which are shown in this coronal section guys, they originates in the hippocampus, they turn like this, they go forward and downward and they reaches the mammillary body here. So that's the origin and that's the termination of the fornix in the mammillary body.